yeah, this is the homepage of the um, uh, of, of Redbox Two, um, and as you can see, it's been um, yeah, divided into sort of different phases of you know of a project's life. Um, so there's obviously the planning phase where we create an RDMP. Um, there are workspaces, which are essentially uh, services um, that the project um, um, might might use through while while research is being undertaken. Um, we've got uh, a managed data section where um, you know you can create data records, so you, know, you as an institution can can track that research data where where it is and and who's responsible for it. Um, and then finally, we've got data publications. So these are the the entities that get published out to to places like RDA and you get a DOI associated with it and all those sorts of things. Um, so yeah, um, as, as I think was mentioned before, it's a um, you know it's a con configurable form system. So the forms are all customizable, um, and you know there's a configurable workflow as well. Um, so um, yeah, you can just you can it's relatively flexible what you can do with um, um, with your records in, in terms of management. So um, I'll show you the RDMP form. Um, so yeah, this is this form's all configurable. This text is all configurable. Um, we have, um, I'll just have to fill in some details here. We've got mandatory fields. I should press save first, so you can see that. Oop, there we go. So we've got, you know, for, form validation, so you can ensure um, the data's um, correct and has has all the required information. Um, I think we're exciting than watching someone type information into a form. Um, yeah, we've got all sorts of different widgets. This like FOR codes. These are these are coming from um, uh, ANS's research vocab. Um, Australia, so yeah, we, we're pulling in data from external sources there. Um, so we can bear SEO codes too, although there's some contention whether people really use them or not, but that's for another day. Um, you know, for, we've also got the existing sort of link up to Mint. So these um, these values are coming from, from a Mint system we set up for the demo. I'll put Mike in. Uh, in there is the, the FNCI, um, and yeah, we have the fields too. So, very good description on data collection. Ensure it's a text file. So all this forms configurable. The the vocab used, um, you know, what what they're, what they're stored as, um, the layout of the form, the help text, all that information is all, all configurable in the forms. go through so we can actually save this thing. Cool. So yeah, the other thing you'll notice, what you, you might notice is in the new new system, in the old system, it used to create a record before you even, a user even inputted any values. So what would used to happen was a user would click to create a new plan or something and then decide, actually, I didn't mean to do that and then leave and you'd end up with all these empty records in your system. That doesn't happen anymore. That only happens on, on save. So that's, that's a pretty standard sort of thing. Um, yeah, where was I? Got long tabs open. Cool. And so this is your, your um, list view for the researcher to see what their, their plans that they currently have. Um, and this is the one we just created. If I click on here, we can also see a detail view of that same um, same form. Actually, I should go quickly back to the to the plan and show you where the workspaces integration would be. Um, so this is on the the workspaces tab. There's a you you normally would see well any any workspaces you created get listed here. So they say you know. You know, a GitLab project, and it's got this title, um, and it is located in this this location. So it's usually a, it's a URL link back to the to the to GitLab project. And when when you select 
uh, and, and when you come into when it's configured up correctly, you should be able to go to here to go to GitLab or any other works uh, provisioning services you might have. Um, it brings up a, a box that gives you, you can configure a bit of an explanation of what the service is and and um, you know what the intention, intended use of it is, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can click open on that, and it will take you to the GitLab form. So each provisioner service workspace service has its own form configuration that that you know has whatever required metadata is required to provision that service so in the GitLab situation it's a matter of authenticating uh, with GitLab to say yes I'm this user and then it will let you create a new project in GitLab which is basically just a code code project um, and it will create it and put some um, um, a, a metadata into the project to, to link it back to the to the data management plan. So I'm you, I'm probably talking a lot and not being able to show you much of what you can yeah. go from this point on. It's, it's not set up, but um, yeah. Uh, Ask a question on that. Yeah, sure. So with the workspace, so it's creating a space of whatever is sensible in that particular tool or workspace yes. um, that's directly related to this plan that you've just created. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you can you can create a new one or you can link an existing project. So, you know, if someone went into GitLab yeah. originally and said, um, created one, then they want to link it back to the project, they can also okay. do that from the same. It's bi-directional, okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, is it a one-to-one -one relationship or can they do multiple GitLab projects or GitLab uh, spaces, whatever the terminology in GitLab is, to this one data management plan? From the... Um, from the red box, uh, from on the red box side of things, it could be multi-directional. I'm not sure what the GitLab plugin okay. in particular does with that metadata file, Mike. <laughs> you might be able to answer this. Um, if you have, if you try and link it to multiple projects, is it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's one Git. A single GitLab can link to a single project, so it's okay. it's one to many. So, yeah, an RDMP can have multiple workspaces in multiple services. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, um, as, as mentioned uh, in the chat, um, currently there's there's three um, provisioner workspace uh, workspace plugins. I should start calling workspace plugins um, that have been <laughs> developed by UTS, um, which are yeah, GitLab, Amira, and Lab Archives. Um, and yeah, we're hoping to bring more online. They they're set up to be pluggable, so they're um, you know, they're not in the the core code base. You you install them into the into the stack, um, so they're they're all optional optional extras onto there. But, you know, obviously, they're they're well, yeah, they're all open source ones that you can just pull in using standard um, yeah install the standard well no no JS installer tools that that are, that, that the the platform uses. And yes, as as Andy said, we are looking at Cloud Store and Google as well. So Google, you might have someone that you know at Cloud Store. That's awesome. Yes, we, we may. So yes, um, they, they, they're keen on 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 having that integration as well. Um, and and Cloud Store, I mean, I, it, yeah, we'll have to see how 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 that pans out. But Cloud Store is a, a version of Own Cloud. So while because theirs is a, a rather massive system that's a bit distributed and things like that. There might be some custom APIs that we're using for Cloud Store, but hopefully there'll be some components of that that would make it relatively easy to set up if you had your own local institutional own cloud, for example, to be able to integrate with that. So yeah, that's that's in the pipeline. So mm. cool. All right. So that, that's that's the plans. So. Um, Going back to the home page, so if I could create a workspace, you could go into view workspaces. You get the same sort of view there, where you can see a list of your workspaces that you you currently have, and what project they're linked to, and you can click into that and make changes to the to the settings on that. Um, so, assuming you created your your plan, um, you've had your created provision some workspaces, you've um, yeah research has happened, data has been collected. Um, and you're ready to create a data record. If we come across to this particular link, we'll, we'll take you to the, um, the data record plan uh, uh, form. So um, from here, we can go into this field and we can start typing 
um, the name of our plan and you can see the plans that we have created previously are there. We could select that and it will pre-populate the metadata from that plan into the data record to, to help save the user having to copy um, a lot of extra information. And as well, of course, importantly, there's that identifier link between the, the record and the plan as well. So you'll have that as well. Um, so obviously there's a, a, a few fields that are, are, are common to both. Um, a data record normally would have a different name to what the plan is, so that one doesn't come across, but um, here you, you, you put that information in. I'm very good with <laughs> making up. <laughs> you need to improve your demos. Exactly. <laughs> Q-Shift needs to have a demo set. The, the problem is real researcher project names are so long and I, you know, they take forever to type in. Um, you can have a nice fanciful q mock one. That's true. Suggestion that I'll, I'll come up with one for the next demo. Something about um, wines in South Australia or something. Yeah, well, I'm right next to the, the Innovation Centre here, so I should <laughs> go ask them. Um, cool, so yeah, so obviously the Chief Investigator information comes across. Um, yeah, information about um, retention periods and things like that. And here is where you can start linking data. So if I had a workspace, um, that information would get populated into here as well. Um, Do you mean the the URL to the provision yes. workspace? Yeah, 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 and they and it can also be be sucked in too um, as part of the packaging process. Um, but yeah, so at the moment, yeah, it'll pull in the the link to the workspace. Um, you can add a URL location, a physical location, obviously like a, it's in this building sort of thing, a file path if it's on some network drive, um, or you can attach attach a file as well. I like how this interface is more sort of collapsed, better UI than the previous one where it was yeah, just all in front of you, a bit too raw. For sure. And obviously it's, um, yeah, a bit more modern as well, a <laughs> bit, bit, bit nicer to look at than the old one, which was getting a bit long in the tooth. And um, yeah, uh, it should also work on mobile devices as well. So yeah, mm -hmm. I can save on that. Um, so yeah, so now you've got your data record. If I go create a data publication, it's the same process again. You can then say, I'm going to create a publication for this record. And get yeah, pre-population again. There's some extra information now that are, is important for, for publication. You know, mm. think about coverage. You know, you've got your maps for geospatial information. Um, data, probably should have attached something so I can show you this, but, but the data gets listed in in this tab here and you can select bits of the data that you need for that publication to, to push that out. Or you can click this to say, publish the metadata only. Um, and you've got all your related publication website with other related info. Um, you can all put that, that in there. You've got licensing and it's your citation information. There you go, citation title, it's a good citation title. Um, and then yeah, you can, also request a DOI as part of that process. So, yeah, um, you can, we've got embargo as well. This works pretty much the same as the existing Redbox One embargoes. Like it doesn't, um, it won't m turn off the embargo automatically. It'll just sit there until um, a user comes in and manually turns it off. That prevents manual, uh, accidental publication or something that, you didn't mean to because you forgot to update the date or whatever. Um, and yeah, uh, that's, that's basically the form. Um, the publication flow actually has, if I bring up that tab, where is it? Here it is, actually has a bunch of different workflow states. Um, and this can be configured to your needs. This is based on, on what UTS uh, wanted. So we've got a draft record um, which is the, with the state that we were creating first. Um, we've got this state called queued, and the idea of that was um, for uh, um, UTS's workflow, they, they, they were, are planning to push a data, a, their data crate format out onto a disk, like all, all sort of pre, in a pre-staging area. So while they're in queued, that process is happening. Probably not explain that very well, but the, the idea is that's kind of a staging staging place while some background 
processes are happening. Um, they then either go into embargoed or reviewed. So embargoed th are things that are obviously um, not ready for publishing. Um, review means a, a reviewer um, is looking at it. Um, publishing is basically like the queued. It's when the actual publication process is happening where it's actually getting pushed out to a publication portal. Um, and then we've got published records and retired records. So published records are obviously ones that have been published and retired are ones that you no longer want published or were published previously, you don't want to have, have, have out there anymore. So yeah, that's the, the form, um, the forms that are in the system. Um, we've also got some admin screens. Um, might talk, talk a little bit about one of the features that we're looking to, to do in the next year, which will help for admins. Um, but we've got some, some basic reporting functionality where you can sort of configure up um, a bit of a query based on, I want to see certain bits of information, you can get a table, table layout of that. Um, we've got exports, so you can export the data in the system out as a CSV. Um, and we've got role in user management. So that's where you can assign users elevated permissions to, to edit and manage the records.